What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, back with another episode, man. I told some of y'all on social media I was out of town yesterday, wasn't able to make any videos, write any articles. I'm going to be catching up on all the commitments from late Friday night throughout yesterday, today on the website and on the YouTube channel. So stay tuned at both places, thebluebloodspod.com, if you haven't checked out our website. But Jackson State, man. Another wide receiver, former four-star Rico Powers, announces announced his commitment late last night to Jackson State, former South Carolina wide receiver. And this is a huge pickup, man. 6'2", 187 out of Atlanta, Georgia. And this is a guy who saw minimal action at South Carolina after the coaching change and the new staff coming in decided that he probably would be better going elsewhere. But a highly rated recruit out of Georgia, man, a top 300 player in the country, a top 50 wide receiver, a top 30 player in the state of Georgia, held offers from South Carolina, Arkansas, Auburn, Cincinnati, Oregon, Michigan State. The list goes on and on. And when you look at what he potentially could bring to this Jackson State offense, man, it is going to be impressive. He was the 2019 Nike, the opening Charlotte top performer, was the Savannah Morning News Offensive Player of the Year in 2018, had over a 1,000 yards rushing, 17 total touchdowns, over almost nine yards per carry, was the 2018 All-Greater Savannah First Team selection as a sophomore, had over 16 touchdowns as well, was a three-sport athlete, basketball and track, and he has, and he has the size and athleticism that I think he is going to be a factor on this Jackson State team. He really reminds me similar of a Trevante Rucker in this offense. And the biggest thing for him is even with his size, he's able to be so shifty in the open field. And also, as you see here, he also can be a special teams factor as well due to that ability just to have the vision, the elusiveness in the open field to go make a play. I think he complements what they have very, very well. Now the question becomes, they have probably, you would say what, eight to 10, maybe 12 players who really deserve playing time immediately. And you've got a lot of guys returning. The only big, the only two wide receivers or three wide receivers that left are Josh Lanier, Warren Newman, and then Keith Corman went to the draft. You return Trevante Rucker. You return Shane Hooks. You return Malachi Wadman. Kevin Coleman's coming in. You also you also have you uh, you also have coming in uh, Western Illinois transfer coming in Gaines. So you have so many people coming in, man. Who is going to see the field? On top of you had Mullins and some other guys who came in at the tight end position. You have Jensi returning at the tight end spot. You have Mark Pope potentially coming in at the wide receiver spot. Now, I've heard some rumors he's not on campus yet. We'll kind of see how that turns out. You had two transfers in from Indiana. You also got two 2023 four-star commits already. There is just so much talent at this wide receiving room. You wonder, yes, everyone says it's all about depth, but Jackson State has some high-impact guys that aren't just there for depth. They're there to play, and so I'm really interested to see how they use all these guys. I think they have a nice balance of guys who's going to fit certain positions where they're going to fit the X on the outside. They're going to fit in the slot. They can be utility guys on top of Travis Hunter getting some specialty snaps at that wide receiver spot as well. Jackson State is just absolutely loaded right now, but for Powers, he's going to bring really great size and length to that outside spot. He's going to be great on screen passes, and as long as you get him on in the open field with the ball in his hands, he can be special, and he's going to go make a play and find the end zone most likely or get you a big game. He's great with his footwork, great balance. He has he has really, truly overlooked strength. You saw there, he can run through tackles if you don't wrap up and you don't come with your full weight, and that's something that I think is really sneaky about his game. Due to his basketball ability, he's got a great he's got a great ability to high point the football in one on one situations as well. I think Powers, with I believe he has two to three years of eligibility left, is going to be a factor for Jackson State moving forward. I think he's going to fit real well with a lot of the slot guys they're bringing in. I'm very interested to see if he's going to challenge potentially for a spot on the special teams as well. He he's had he's had experience doing that. 
So I think there's a lot of ways powers could fit into what Jackson State wants to do. I think a lot of questions are going to be answered. Yes, we can go look at the Nevada offense and kind of see the scheme that Brett Bartoloni is going to – or Brett Bartoloni is going to bring into Jackson State. But – at the same time, this is his first stop as like a true offensive coordinator. I don't think until that FAMU game we're really going to know exactly how he wants to utilize all this wide receiving talent that Jackson State has. On top of even like some of the new running back talent they have in Savion Wilkinson and some of these other guys, I'm very interested to see how they're going to utilize all this talent that they have brought in and have in that building down in Jackson, Mississippi. It's going to be an extremely interesting discovery process, man, early in the season to see how they utilize all these people because they got some big games. You look at weeks one through three, challenging game against FAMU of Miami in the Orange Blossom Classic, challenging game in Memphis against a reloaded Tennessee State team, bringing in a bunch of great talent this all season. And then you get a rebuilt Grambling team with Hugh Jackson in week three. There's no, there's no growing opportunities for Jack State. You're going to have to be ready to go out there and perform on the field. They got a lot of great talent. Powers is just another addition to the best wide receiving room and the deepest wide receiving room in the FCS right now and one of the best right now in the country. It's been so impressive in how Jackson State has been able to bring in talent, bring in all these transfers, and now they're getting on the high school trail two four-star wide receiving commits already. This is turning into something special, man. I'm excited to see what happens. But former four-star South Carolina wide receiver Rico Powers announces his transfer to Jackson State. Comment below what you think of the transfer. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Also, check our website today for more recruiting news from across the FCS and college football that happened yesterday and even throughout today. But, guys, until next time, the Blue Bloods are out.